He says, yeah, you're really speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. And I'm speaking to you on behalf of Brit and movement of the ten tribes of Israel. We hold that the ten tribes of Israel are now to be found amongst Western nations. That is where the Western tribes are to be searched for. That is where they are to be found amongst Western peoples. Our movement, Brit and Hebrew nations, works for this. We work to prove it. We do research on it. And we also uh, reveal the results of our research. And we work towards a reconciliation between Judah, the Lord, the Lord and the, the Jewish people. Judah, the Jewish people, and the last ten tribes of Israel, primarily represented by Joseph. That is what we work for. These are the three R's of Britain research, revelation, reconciliation. And now we are going to discuss uh, uh, an aspect of the lost ten tribes before they were exiled, but it has some implications concerning their future redemption. As we know, there's a holy name, the holy name, uh, in the Bible, and this holy name is not pronounced. It uh, means uh, several things. It has uh, various meanings, but uh, and all of the meanings are uh, uh, reconcilable with each other. They supplement and complement each other, as as, as there's much evidence and much uh, of the, of the um, principles of the Bible. And his name primarily means he who is, or he who causes all that is to be. His name was not pronounced. His name was not pronounced uh, for reasons that are found in the Bible. In Exodus 3.15 we are told that this name shall be hidden according to the Hebrew Bible and that the name as it is pronounced and the name as it will be recalled are two different things. But in the end times his name will be pronounced. His name will once again be restored. At the moment it is not and there are reasons for this. We have articles and talks on this subject explaining it. And our impression is that, that this principle that the name should not be um, bandied about and cheapened and sullied, what this principle was respected. And that the ancient Hebrews did not use this name in their everyday speech. And, th and this also applied to the Lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes of Israel, even though they were in so many ways pagans, they also respected the God of Israel, who was the God of their forefathers and the and the God of Moses who had given them the law, and they were had um they had a a, 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 a a kind of split personality concerning what the truth was and how they should act, and this is also represented and finds its expression in their culture, and uh, and also until this very day, in the, until this very day they have a, a dual personality, a schizophrenic aspect to their to their attributes. On the one hand, they can be very much against the Jewish people. They can also be against the um, against the state of Israel. But others amongst them uh, are are supportive of the state of Israel. I live in Jerusalem, and this is important to me. It should be important to everyone who believes in the Bible, but it's especially important to me and my family because Israel is is uh, is under siege, as if to say, by all the nations of the world. But we know that a few friends that we do have are in the West, they are amongst people whom we identify as belong to Lost and Tribes of Israel. And if we want any changes to come about, it will ch come from there. Any changes for the better will come from there. That is where our best hopes are of finding support for the Jewish people. They are amongst nations whom we identify as descended from Lost and Tribes of Israel. In ancient times, there were, had been 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel had been united in one entity, one country. One nation, and this nation is split into two different parts. The northern tribes, the ten tribes, were the majority. They separated out. They had their own independent kingdom in the north. Whereas the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and later most of Levi, were in the south, and there were also minority representatives of others. Of other tribes in the south in the kingdom of Judah. From the kingdom of Judah come most of the Jewish people today. And uh, we have evidence that the name, the name of God, was not uh, was not usually uh, spoken on an everyday level. We have uh, indications that uh, the name Yar was pronounced as Yam. It was pronounced as Yam by the northern Hebrews and also by the uh, by by people in Judah in, as well in some in some respects. We have uh, the name Abiyam, Abiyam. Abijam is how it's spelt, but it's uh, pronounced as Abiyam. Abiyam was the son of King Rehoboam. In other words, he was the grandson of King Solomon. And King Solomon was the son of King David. 
And that Biyam is, uh, is mentioned in 1 Kings 14.31. There was also someone with the very same name, Abiyam, who was the son of Jeroboam, the king of Israel. Uh, Abiyah. Abiyah is also known as Abiyah. Abiyam is known as Abiyah. We find Abiyam, king of Judah, is also referred to as Abiyah in 1 Chronicles 3.1 and 2 Chronicles 11.22. 12, 16, and in other places. Therefore, we have uh, Abiyam being the same as Abiyah, and we have the Yah element of his name being given elsewhere as Yam. So here we have this principle that Yam was another, was a, a nice, was a, you thought, was a, as if to say a replacement, uh, was a substitute for the, for the expression Yah. And we have, and this is, uh, this is uh, something that we should take note of. Uh, and we also have the uh, the uh, city of Ugarit on the north Syrian coast, also known as Ras Shamra, North Syria. This city was um, is uh, considered a Canaanite pagan city by archaeologists, and they place its date right back in the distant past. Emmanuel Velikovsky showed that it was not to be dated so so far back was in effect contemporary contemporary with the uh, Israelite kings and a lot of its culture and uh, its literature were in fact similar to that to that of the Bible and we consider it to have been in effect in this, an Israelite city at all events if it was not an Israelite city it was a Canaanite city who had been very heavily infiltrated and influenced by Israelite elements so this is an open subject, the, 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 the debate is still going on. In our, in our eyes it was Israelite, at the very least it was Canaanite who had been influenced by Israelites. And there too they had a god called Yam, and sometimes his name Yam is, uh, is uh, given as Yah, which is similar to the Israelite god, the god of Israel, and they, since they were pagans, so they uh, debased the name and applied it to their pagan guys' concepts, and so did the Israelites, as we shall see. And this, because the Israelites had been done this, because they had taken attributes of the one god or the name of the one god, and sometimes applied it to pagan gods or to pagan uh, principles, it was one of the reasons why eventually the, the pronunciation of the name was to be forbidden altogether. So we have this principle. We have another principle that the name, uh, the full name of God was uh, pronounced by in the north as uh, Yaho, Yaho, and uh, this was a this was a, this is a non this is in a, in a inscriptions when we have Yaho. This is a, a characteristic of the northern Israelites who use this way of pronouncing the name and of writing it instead of using the full the full name as it appears in the Bible. And they did this, in our opinion, they did this out of respect. Because they too had to, uh, did not want the name of God to be banned around and cheapened, even though they themselves in their lives and in their cultic practices and in, in their religious, uh, uh, and the, the, the pagan, the pagan, the pagan, the pagan ways they went in, they were not respectable. Well, they still uh, retained respect for the name itself. And the ten tribes were in the north, Judah was in the south, as we said. We have the tribe of Simeon. The tribe of Simeon was also in the south, but not only was it in the south, it was way, way down to the south. It was in the southern Negev, the southern south of Judah, and also it, uh, it, it extended through Sinai, and uh, may also have encompassed, encompassed part of eastern Egypt, or what is now considered eastern Egypt today. And, but, and Simeon was there, but nevertheless we find Simeon associated with the ten tribes. It was not associated with the northern tribes. Sorry, it was not associated with Judah. It was associated with the ten tribes. When the ten tribes went into exile, Simeon is counted as part of them. So the way this may be explained is that, uh, is that the ten tribes cons contained, uh, con uh, comprised not only the tribes to the north of Judah, they also comprised tribes to the east of the Jordan River, Reuben, Simeon, Reuben, Gad, and Harvard, Manasseh were east of the Jordan, were to the east of Jordan River. Also, we have a, a, a biblical uh, uh, references to Simeon having also sailed to the east of the Jordan River, 
And in addition to that, the, uh, the, ten, the domain of the rulers of Samaria of the ten tribes stretched therefore to the east of the Jordan River and it went down south. It, it, it went past or may have even at, at, some, st- at some times it also encompassed, encompassed the regions of Edom, Ammon, Moab, and then it linked up with Simeon in the south. And far to the south of Israel, we have a, a we have finding psychological findings of the settlement known as Kantilat Ajrut in southern Israel, the former territory of Shimeon. There we find a settlement which, according to the artifacts and so on, uh, uh, relates to Samaria, relates to northern Israel more than it does to Judah. And here we have uh, in- depictions of uh, someone uh, called uh, God, called the God of Israel, with the name of the God of Israel. But this is, is, is depictions of this personage of this image also show him uh, with a uh, female consort, consort a, pa- uh, a Canaanite goddess and also shows uh, an Egyptian god uh, associated with him or beside him so therefore we have a combination and synth- synthesis as if to say of pagan elements with Israelite ones and this apparently was uh, to be found throughout the Israelite nations uh, and uh, and uh, this is also uh, sh- shows us the degenerative aspects of the Israelites before they were exiled. There's also uh, an inscription which mentions uh, this god. Name it should not actually be pronounced in any way, but this is how they, uh, in writing, say uh, say it was pronounced. Actually, no one knows how it was pronounced because the the Y may have been above the. The W may have been a V, the Y may have been an I, and also none of the vowels are known to us. And there are numerous ways it could be pronounced, and we're forbidden, forbidden actually to, to even try to pronounce it. So there's, there's a reference to this God of Samaria, connecting his name with Samaria, Samarin, Samron, uh, Shomron, in other words, in Hebrew. It is Samaria, and Samaria was the region in the north of Israel, which um, around which the, the, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes was centered, and then also in the parts of the Bible, Samaria is a name given, a generic name given for all of the ten tribes. So we have these findings. We have other findings in this area of Kantilat uh, Ashrud, which also reflect upon the, the Israelite aspects of the of the of the region of the of the settlement of the culture of that time and also of it, the synthesis going on between the pagans and the Israelites. And we also have a reference, we have references in the Bible of Israelite activity in that region. 1 Kings 22 tells us about King, King Jehoshaphat of, of Judah who teamed up with the Haziah, the son of Ahab of the northern Israel to build uh, ships in the Etzion Geba, which is uh, to the southeast, close to uh, modern day Elat. And it says uh, Jehoshaphat made merchant ships to go to Ophir for gold, but they never sailed, for the ships were erected at Zion Geba. Then Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Did my servants go with you, your servants, in the ships? But Jehoshaphat would not. And, one, and also we have in 1 Kings 20. Verses 35 to 37, and it says, After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, allied himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who acted very wickedly, and he allied himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Etzin Geba. But Eliezer, the son of Dodava, of Marasha, prophesied against uh, Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. Then the ships were erected so they were not able to go to Tarshish. Tarshish was in what, uh, Spain, near present-day Gibraltar, and it was a scene of Israelite activity, and eventually Israelites were to be exiled there. Two, from the ten tribes, Israelites were taken by Philistines and Phoenician proxies to that region, and they settled there, as archaeological uh, findings show us. They settled there, they remained there for about 200 years, after which they moved to the northwest of Spain, and then uh, shortly afterwards, and, uh, and, uh, or as an ongoing process in the centuries following that, they moved to Ireland and to Britain and to France, what is now known as France. And uh, we have proven this, and there's proof of it. 
And so we see from that the, 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 the Israelites had been active in this region, and that both Judah and uh, the ten tribes, the northern kingdom of, of Israel, had also been acted, active in this region of South East Israel, uh, south of Judah, and uh, they were taken away. The Simeon was taken away with the rest of the ten tribes, uh, and we have seen how before they were taken away, they had uh, already accepted or taken upon themselves aspects of pagan religion. We find in 2 Kings 17 a full uh, lengthy description of that, which we shall go through very briefly, uh, where it tells us exactly what happened. It says, Now the king of, his, uh, of Assyria, 2 Kings 17, 2 Kings 17, beginning from verse 5, 2 Kings 17. Now the king of Assyria went through all the land and went up to Samaria, Samaria was the center of the northern kingdom of Israel, of the ten tribes. He went up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. The ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria, Hoshea was the king of Israel. The ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Israel, took Samaria and carried Israel away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and by the harbor, the river of Gozan and the city of the Mates. What was it, the children of Israel? They sinned against the Lord their God who brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And they had feared other gods and had walked in the statutes of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. So we see here that the Israelites, before they went into exile, they had gone in the ways of the nations around them, whom they should have driven out, but they had not done so, but they had lived amongst them, or allowed them to live amongst them, and they had learnt their ways and followed their practices. And all of a sudden the children of Israel secretly did against the Lord their God things that were not right. It says secretly, actually in Hebrew it says Yichapu, which means that they had synthesized, they had taken aspects of of the Mosaic religion and they had applied them, mixed them, intermixed them with the Canaanite practices. That is what this verse is saying. And they built for themselves high places in all their cities, from much fair to fortified city. They set themselves up sacred pillars and wooden images in every high hill and under every green tree. Burnt incense on all the high places that the nations from the Lord had carried away before them. And they did wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger, for they served idols. Of which the Lord had said to, said to them, You shall not do this thing. The Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all his prophets and every seer, saying, Turn away from your evil ways, and also God is speaking to us now, turn away from your evil eyes and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, which I sent to you by my servants of prophets. Nevertheless, they would not hear, but stiffened their necks, like the necks of their fathers who do not believe in the Lord their God. We need to believe, we need to learn the Bible and to take his message to our heart. And they rejected his statutes and his test covenant that he had made with their fathers and his testimonies which he had testified against him. They put idols because became idolaters and went after the nations who were all around them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not be like them. And uh, so they left all the commandments of the Lord their God made for themselves a modern image of two calves made a wooden image and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And it continues and it tells us that because of this, the ten tribes were taken away and exiled, and that Judah had also sinned in a similar fashion, but because Judah, because uh, for God for his own reasons, and because uh, of the promise to David, Judah was spared at this exile. The ten tribes were not, the ten tribes were taken away by their sins, so they were exiled. And in their places of exile, they became even more like the nations around them. They lost altogether consciousness, they lost all recollection, all, all uh, remembrance of their ancestry, all... Uh, he break all uh, shred of his of Israelite identity, apart from a few hazy legend, legends, a few names here and there, uh, and a few practices which we have spoken of, which it's in tribes in their places of exile, lost all recollection of their ancestry. They forgot who they are, they forgot who they were, and uh, they became like the Gentiles around them, like they similar to what they had uh, even began to be before they were exiled, and that was why they were exiled. And nevertheless, there was a divine purpose behind this. God wanted them as if to say to uh, forget who they were in order to enable them to fulfill a, uh, a plan, 
Tarski had a design for them to fulfill, which was to uh, to elevate themselves and to elevate the rest of the world with them, which to some degree they have done, they succeeded in doing. This was what God wanted. And now the plan is drawing to a close and God wants the uh, ten tribes to know who they were or who they are, to realize their Israelite ancestry, to return, to return it within their hearts and also physically eventually to return to the land of Israel, to the greater land of Israel stretching from the Nile to the Euphrates and to reunite with Judah. And now they are the only friends that Judah has. Judah, and, uh, but uh, they are still going in their pagan ways, uh, and not only in their pagan ways, they are going in, their, in the ways of the nations around them, and they are, many of them also against the state of Israel and against the Jewish people. They have not abandoned this uh, aspect of, of uh, idolatry, of paganism that they had in the past, and so to Judah also has faults, and we all have to correct ourselves and to repair ourselves. And we have to come back to God, the God of Israel and to the people of Israel, to recognize the brotherhood that is between us and I live in Israel and this is important to me. We want the, the people of Israel to reunite. We want the ten tribes to realize that they are brother nations to the, to the Jewish people and to support the state of Israel because what the state of Israel needs this support. At all events, may God bless all of you. We are, we are being promised that in the end times this will be rectified. Judah and Joseph, the ten tribes will come together. Zechariah chapter 14 says, uh, verse 9, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall be you. Be the Lord is one, and his name one. In that day we shall know the name of God, we shall pronounce it. We shall know how it is to be uttered, and uh, we must work towards that day. We must do what we can, we must do what we can, and God Almighty will help us, he will do what he wills. May... Uh, the God of Israel be with us. We should also realize another point which we, we which n needs to be emphasized, needs to be remembered, that the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, is the God of the universe. He is the one God. He is the God, the Creator, who revealed Himself to mankind through Israel, through the Bible. The Bible is a book which speaks primarily to the Israelite nations, and through the Israelite nations, he speaks to all mankind. That is why God wanted to reveal himself to mankind. That is through the Bible, through the Israelite nations. And uh, whether, this, whether we consider, think this is uh, justified or not justified, it doesn't really matter. This is a fact. This is the truth. This is the way things are. And this is what we have to bear in mind and to uh, use it. Use it to... Uh, bring us closer to the truth and bring us closer to the God of Israel who is calling to us to come back to him. Thank you.